What's up, ladies and gentlemen, Mark here. Today, we're gonna to be looking at Logan Paul. Logan Paul, a controversial YouTuber. Logan and his brother. Listen, Logan Paul did an interview recently with True Gordy, talking about all sorts of things, including boxing, MMA, his prime energy drink, and money. We're gonna focus in on the money aspect. He talked about money, what it looks like to be a billionaire, and NFTs. I think this is a super cool interview, and I want you guys to check it out. And we'll give our commentary throughout the interview as well. Let's go. I, I see you being a billionaire. There's no doubt in my mind that you're going to hit that. Thanks, bro. You know what I want to be? I want to be the anti-billionaire. The billionaire who doesn't act like a billionaire at all. Like, I want to I want to wear, like, shorts. <laughs> like, no <laughs> shoes like you are right now. Like, you walked in here without shoes on. I said, I literally go, that guy's cool. <laughs> I want to like, I want to, I want to just, I want to do shit that billionaires don't do. Cause yeah. bro, I'm young and crazy. Mm -hmm. like, well, and also I document my life. Yeah. I, my life is my media. So like, what does that look like? What is it like mm -hmm. inside a real billionaire's life? You know, <clears throat> what is that journey? Come with me. Let's mm -hmm. go find out. Let's go fucking, let's give money back. Let's spend money on crazy. Shit. Let's have our money, make money. Let's build more companies. What does it look like? Mm. But in regards to money, obviously you've already got a lot of money and you're chasing that like generational wealth right now and you're, you're setting yourself up to be just insanely wealthy. But when you've got all that, what is the point of it for you? Aside from having fun, aside from document, what is the, what is the out hour of that? Yeah, look like? it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great question. Yeah, because like, I don't know, bro. I never, I never chase money. It just, money is a, is a, fruitful byproduct of the thing that I love to do. Exactly, yeah. So there's some key things that I want to point out there. Logan Paul does talk about making lots of money. Logan Paul's net worth is currently around 19 to $20 million right now. He came up from YouTube and he was a, a Vine entertainer for a very long time. The Logan brothers have been an absolute crazy success story when it comes to personal branding. So we can learn a lot from those guys, even though some people don't really like them. They're brilliant marketers, and so that's what keeps them out there, people learning about who they are and what the heck that they're doing. So he talks about making money and even making money make money, which is interesting. I'd like to hear a little bit more about that when, when it comes to his thoughts on how money makes money, whether it's different investments in real estate or whether it's putting your money into the stock market or cryptocurrency, or maybe he has an advisor talking to him about the benefits of Cash value life insurance. And then it cuts over to True Gordy, who asks a very, very interesting question. Once you have it all, once you make all this money, what is it for? What's the purpose of all of it? And that brings me to another thought. I started thinking about when I was reading in the book of Ecclesiastes. The book of Ecclesiastes supposedly was wrote by the wisest and richest man in the world, King Solomon. And he goes ahead and says this, chapter 5, verse 10. Those who love money will never have it. How meaningless to think that wealth brings true happiness. The more you have, the more people come to help you spend it. So what good is wealth, except perhaps to watch it slip through your fingers? You know, the Bible has a lot to say about money. And if you haven't read Ecclesiastes, I encourage you, whether you're religious or not, read through the book of Ecclesiastes because there is some very good, wise nuggets in that book that you can get a lot out of. So in our last video with Diddy and Ray Dalio, Ray talks about the exact same things. He says, and you can go ahead and check out the episode here. He says, I don't work for money. I never chased money. I never went looking for it. It always came to me. That's because he learned how to play a game. If you learn how to play the game, they end up paying you for playing the game. And Diddy said the exact same thing. He goes, you know what? I don't work for money either. That's a common theme that I hear amongst the wealthy that they don't work for their money. You see, the lower to middle class work for their money. They, try, they trade time for dollars. But the uber wealthy, they don't chase after that money because they don't trade time for dollars. They do things, they invest in things, or they build assets that end up paying them for a long time. You know, and I happen to be smart enough to amplify it exponentially. Mm -hmm. um, but what's the goal? I mean, bro, uh, one word answer, money is a scoreboard. It's a game to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, where do you rank on that scoreboard? Mm -hmm. You know, how many, how many billionaires, how many self-made billionaires are there under 30? 
American self-made billionaires under 30. Not many, I would, I would bet. It can't be more than yeah. 10. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's mm. cool. That's cool to me. How many kids will that inspire? I mean, sure, like, inspired to do what? Make money, whatever. But, like, I don't know. No, there's nothing wrong with making money. I just mean, what is there anything that you would do with that money that you would feel would be a lasting legacy as opposed to documenting getting the money? You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I kind of like uh, Beast's philosophy. Mm. He wants to die with zero dollars to his name, which I, which I also kind of like. I, I, think, I, think, I think I'll probably end up giving 90% of it away or back. Mm. Or, like, I just won't, like... I, I, you, you mentioned generational wealth. I don't give a f about generational mm -hmm. wealth. I do, my kids can, if I raise my kids correctly, they'll create their version of generational wealth. Wow, there's actually a lot to unpack right there. He talks about wanting to leave this life with zero, zero dollars, which means he's going to give 90% away, whether he gives it away to charity or whether he just gives it back to the community. It's kind of like he said, like Beast, like Mr. Beast does it. Mr. Beast makes millions and millions and millions of dollars per video and he ends up giving it all away or giving it back or spending it on his business. And so that's an interesting way of looking at it. And, and it brings me back to Ecclesiastes where King Solomon said, what is it all for? What is it all for? You have it, you use it, eat, drink, and be merry, but then you're still miserable. Why not just give it all away? And a lot of billionaires that I've learned about over the years do this exact same thing. I think there's a point when you make so much money that it just doesn't make you happy anymore. It's just kind of just like, like Logan Paul said, it's a scoreboard. Where do you rank on that scoreboard? And it, it makes me think of like, like Bill Gates. Some people hate Bill Gates because of whatever, whatever he stands for. But Bill Gates is, is one of the largest philanthropists in the entire world where he gives most of his money away. We can't deny it, guys. Bill Gates does give a lot of money back, regardless what else he does. We're not going to discuss that right now. But Logan Paul says the same thing. He wants to start to give it all back. He even goes further in talking about generational wealth. This is cool now. He's not necessarily worried about leaving an inheritance to his children because he said if they raise his, if he raises his children the right way, they're going to be raised with work ethic. They're going to be raised with the right values, with the right understanding, the right education to learn how to create their own generational wealth their own wealth, maybe be becoming business partners or starting new businesses or being entrepreneurs at an early age. Rich Dad, Poor Dad for teenagers that you can get your teenager. Just go ahead and look it up on Amazon or check the description down below and you can have your kids read it. My kids are 10, so I'm trying to give them the understanding of what money is. Money is not everything, but it's a tool. It's a tool that can be used for good and it's a tool that be can be used for evil. You know, he, he does have the toys, trust me. He has the flashy things, which is, that's not, that's not, there's nothing wrong with that. But at the end of the day, he's like, it's just a tool. It's just where I rank on the scoreboard. I'm probably going to give the rest of it away. Money's an, a magnifier. It's going to magnify what's already inside of you. If you're a good person, it's going to magnify the goodness. If you're a bad person, it's going to magnify the evil and the wicked. I, what if, I, they, if you raise a, a little sort of waster who just wants to use daddy's money to play PlayStation? No shot. Yeah. No shot. Yeah. I'm not my kid's friend. I'm not. I'm not going to buy him the shit he wants to buy. I'm my kid's father. Yeah. Like I, I I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna raise him. You're gonna like, give them like the Greg a, treatment then. A, 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 a healthy version of the Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot give him the Greg treatment. You know what I'm saying? You'll be locked up. <laughs> <I'll> be locked <laughs> up. <laughs> nah, but dude, you know, you, you got to be a dad. You got to be a fucking dad. Yeah. And like, I'm gonna raise my kids w with really important, strong values where they're gonna be able to create their own. Shit and not yeah. need to use my money. NFTs, all right? You, you've, you've went balls deep. Stop. Oh, you don't want to talk about them? No one does. Hmm. Bad. Dude, it's just like, what the f is going on? <laughs> I did, I did What's think. What's going on? <laughs> you put so much effort. So this is the thing, is the last time you were here, you were going around the world taking all these photos and you went, I've got this idea, it's gonna be Sick. And that was potentially the most excited I've ever seen you about anything. And obviously, just before you do your big drop, everything crashes. 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 So Nine months of the hardest, most passionate work of my life. About, about to drop a project that I could that I believe could be the beginning of my magnum opus, my life's work. Mm. And the market crashes. It's very Wolf of Wall Street. In the movie, 
Yeah. Yeah. But guess what? Our shit is strong. Originals is strong. No, it's it's still doing well, but but the, the is there an issue there with the value of what you initially intended to get? And like so say for example, there was a guy who bought a spot on the podcast. Yep. Three hundred thousand dollars that Polaroid sold. Okay. For. All right, so let's just get an understanding of what an NFT is. For those of you who don't know what an NFT is, an NFT is a non fungible token. What does non fungible mean? It's something that you can't swap for the same value. What is a non-fungible item? A non-fungible, which means it cannot be replaced by the exact same thing, a piece of art made by Picasso. A one-of-one one piece of art made by Picasso is a non-fungible item. It's a non-fungible piece of art, which means there's only one. You can only trade it for a different version or a different piece of art. That's called non-fungible. A dollar bill is a fungible item where you can take a dollar bill, trade it for another dollar bill. Okay. So money in essence is a fungible product, but art, fine art, antiques, digital music, things of that nature are considered non fungible where there's only usually one of one that you can trade it for a completely different item. Now they're using NFTs right now. The craze is all of this digital art, these screenshots of these crypto punks, and there's thousands of different types of NFTs, right? But that one of one is attached to a blockchain, an open ledger. It's a digital blockchain. It holds a value. It has specific attributes and you can only take that NFT and sell it, buy it or trade it for a different type of NFT. And so Logan Paul started an NFT drop and he got a lot of heat for this because it, it, the minute he dropped his NFT, the market crashed and a lot of their holder, a lot of the holders in that community end up losing a lot of money. Now he's going to go on to say how strong his community is. And I'm interested to see how this project really takes off. Well, the, the value of what he bought was 300,000, yeah, but, yeah. so, so, but, but now what you've got is not worth 300,000, is it? Let's see. Let's see. He bought it for 165 ETH. ETH is at 1200 right now. It's probably worth about 190 or 200,000. Yeah, so essentially he, in cash, he'd pay much, much less. But an ETH is not measured in USD. That's just the metric by which we look at it going okay. up or down. So, um, yeah, I, I don't give, I don't give a f I, I, I know exactly what I'm building and, mm. and people are catching on. And this is just the beginning. Like I, originals is a a uh, tech uh, organization disguised as an art project. Mm -hmm. Art is the ve the medium that I am telling the stories of my art on is the blockchain, mm -hmm. which is why NFT land works for me as an artist. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm not like a painter. I'm a capturer. I'm a documenter. Mm -hmm. I'm a storyteller. I tell the stories, I capture the art, it goes on the blockchain, it's called originals because there's an original piece tied to it that the holders will get eventually, the actual Polaroid, mm -hmm. that is, an ex it's what you see is what you get, they're unaltered. Um, <clears throat> And then the, 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 the holders join what's called a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization. So half of the money goes into this DAO and then the holders are going to decide what to do with it. Right. So there's, there's so many smart ways to strategically allocate money using the brains of smart people. So it's 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 the beginning of, uh, uh, I think, the future of community. And so I agree with what Logan Paul is saying. It's the beginning of community. Actually, Gary V also dropped his own NFTs. But he's using his NFTs for entry into his masterminds, entry into his uh, big events. So if you hold an NFT, it's like holding a ticket. But that ticket unlocks all types of membership perks, uh, events, personal phone calls, masterminds, Zoom calls. And, and that NFT gets you access. So when you go to these different things, they'll have a scanner. They'll make sure that they check the, the blockchain, so to say. And they'll make sure that they look and make sure that you match up with your, your purchase and then they go ahead and give you entrance to that event or whatever the case may be. Logan Paul is talking about the exact same thing, that NFTs are going to be the future. It's going to be the future of building community. And so I've talked about this on podcasts. I've talked about this on, on past videos. NFTs, get, get the snapshot, the pictures, the crypto punks out of your head. NFTs could be used for, um, could be used for license. You can use an NFT. You can attach an NFT 
or put your license on the blockchain that would create your license as an NFT, okay? You can do uh, home ownership, your title, your registration, your, your deed can all be in the form of a digital asset, an NFT. Again, it goes back to non-fungible. Those documents, there's one of one. They can't be traded for the same thing. They can only be traded for something different. A house can only be swapped for a different house. I hope that's starting to make sense to you right now. So Logan Paul's talking about the exact same thing. That's going to be the future of building community. And I tend to believe that that's true. I don't think NFTs are going anywhere. I don't think the blockchain's going anywhere. I don't think Bitcoin and Ethereum are going anywhere. Don't get me wrong. It's crashing. It's going to crash even lower than it is right now at the recording of this video. But it's going to be a time to scoop up some more because it's going to the moon. And I don't say that lightly as a crypto boy, as a crypto bro. But I believe, I'm a firm believer in the blockchain and firm believer in certain cryptos uh, as, it, as it relates to storing your wealth and, and holding value long term. Let me know in the comments down below if you're digging this type of interview and this type of discussion. And if you want to hear more about crypto, metaverse, NFTs, I can definitely do some more videos as well. Give me a comment down below. I need to know what my community wants so that I can start to provide more value for you. What I'm building. So while I launch at the shittiest time ever, um, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't, it's, it's, it's almost irrelevant actually. And also when I think, when I think when we, when we, my community, make it out of this woods, out of these woods as the only, the only project that is still thriving, mm. I think it'll be notable. It's thriving partially because of you, the one you're not allowing it to do what the rest of them have done because you have a bit of a superpower in that you are a promoting expert and you're the creator mm -hmm. and people are invested in you mm -hmm. more so than the concept. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, so uh, you chose the right jockey. I've had projects that didn't turn out the way that I wanted them to, that definitely were not the intention of them. Gary said this on my podcast, a big mistake investors make sometimes, and the ones that, uh, one that he sees a lot, is he'll have young entrepreneurs uh, pitch you know, him and, and, and send their decks around, and uh, an investor will uh, invest in an entrepreneur's first project. Maybe it doesn't work out, right? It's his first project. And then he comes up with a second one, and an investor will invest in his second project. Fails again, right? Mm -hmm. Then he comes with a third. And the investor goes, dog, you've lost me money twice. Like I've, I've bet on you twice now. And uh, I'm actually not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna believe in, in your stuff this time because we've been through this before. Number three takes off. Mm. That's exactly what happened with Gymshock, by the way. Really? Shout, shout out Ben Francis. Really? Yeah. Like he tried something, fail. Tried yeah. something, fail. Tried something, works. Yeah. Right? It, well, it didn't work quite as well. And then the third thing I think it was what was what took off. Exa obviously. Exactly. Yeah. So oftentimes people will lose hope. Mm because of failed projects but like if you're a real builder and a real winner you keep building you're gonna keep building and something's gonna mm -hmm. work that's important business knowledge right there if all you took away from this video was keep pushing keep pushing keep pushing then that then this video is worth it for you a builder he said a true builder a sign of a true builder is somebody who doesn't give up after one after two after three failures because the next one is gonna be the very thing that pops, pops right off. What would you say if I would offer you an opportunity, but the opportunity would take you 10 years, but at the end of 10 years, you would be a cash flow millionaire, first generation cash flow millionaire. Would it be worth it? Maybe no for some of you, maybe yes for others of you. Making money takes time. Thomas Edison failed at the light bulb, what is it, 10,000 times? But he has this famous quote that says, I did not fail 10,000 times, I just found 10,000 times not to create the light bulb. You get the gist of what I'm trying to say. There's also a really cool booklet called Acres of Diamonds. You can go ahead and check that out on Amazon as well. But it talks about a man who's digging for diamonds, digging for diamonds, digging for diamonds, and eventually gives up. And then another guy comes back and continues digging for diamonds, and just a few feet away, or 12 inches away, he finds the cavity of diamonds. But the first guy was just 12 inches away from finding all of the diamonds. It's an incredible little book, and it really gives a lot of insight on what it means to push forward. In my industry, in the financial services, we have a builder's model, and we're always training our 
younger agents, don't give up after the first no. Don't give up after the first disappointment, after your family and your friends want to leave you or, or make fun of you. Don't give up because eventually you will find your builders. You will find your generals. You will find the people that want to go the distance with you. You may not make it the first year, maybe not the second year, but the third year and the fourth year are going to be when you take off. Yeah. It takes time. Originals will be a, a decade long project. Yeah, I, I did realize that because I got in on something that I think you were in on uh, Vive. Yeah. Uh, he called me and uh, same thing, like that's plummeted, you know Doug, I mean? Doug. And they've got Disney, they've got... Doug, I'm not the bad guy here. Yeah, yeah. There's some actual f***ers out there. Yeah. And I'm, it's not me. Like I'm here to build, to mm. be an honest builder. And I know what I'm building. I know I have a good heart. I know where my head's at. I know I've f***ed up a lot, but I've learned from all of it. Mm. I'm dangerous, dude. And what I'm realizing actually in this crypto crash, being someone who is still actively releasing a crypto project at the worst time ever, <sighs> it is, it is, and this is, this is the mistake that I made the first two times. This is what I'm realizing now. It is about community. <laughs> community. That's the beautiful thing about some of these projects. The community of people that you build around a unified belief in something. Putting smart minds together is beautiful. It's actually amazing, man. I, I, I mentioned I'm building this DAO. The people in it, we, we have like a chat. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. They're all so excited about the same thing I'm excited about. What can you do with that? That's exciting. The world of women thing, it represents inclusion, represents women in crypto and blockchain. Art, community, like I just love it. To me though, as much as it is about art and creation, it's about money. And overall, with all the money that you've put in and all the money you've taken out, where do you think you're sitting right now in terms of profit, losses? I'm probably even. Really? Because of the market right now. Do you think you're about you know, one of the few who's even though? Right now? Mm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Mm. If you bought ETH, in the past like two and a half years, you're down. Mm. Fact. If you are a human being who bought Ethereum, in the past two and a half years, you're down. Most everyone is. Um, and so yeah, my, 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 I happen to have some big ass wins. But that's now, saved you, hasn't it? That's saved you. Saved me, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I'm, I'm, but I'm even now, man. I, mm. I, I've had some big losses, you know, but such is life dude mm. so in the world of crypto we know it's it's it comes and it goes it's up and it's down it's a variable product at the end of the day when i sit down with my clients and we run them through what's called the three ways that money grows we talk about fixed variable and index it's the three ways the money grows fixed is your bank accounts it's your money market accounts it's your savings your checking it's a fixed rate of return it has safety and liquidity but it doesn't grow much and then we have variable Variables the up and the down. It's the stock market. It's your re retirement plans. It's real estate. It's cryptocurrency. A lot of people don't realize that cryptocurrency is just another. Uh, it, it's going to be a a different asset class, right? But it goes up and it goes down. It's as fast as this goes up is as fast as it can come down to the ground, and that's what's happening right now in our market. And so, people, what happen is they get so nervous down at the bottom, and they end up selling, and then they end up losing. Never sell your investments at a loss because that's when you lose the game. And by no means is this investment advice. So do your own research and never invest more than you're willing to lose. And then the third way to grow your money is obviously indexing. We're not talking indexed funds. We're talking an indexing strategy. This is what huge life insurance companies use to index your money against the market. You get the highs of the market without any of the losses due to a 0% floor. And the funny thing is, a life insurance agent didn't even come up with this concept. It was actually a broker. It was actually a, an investor that came up with this concept. He said, I want the highs of the market, but the protection of life insurance, boom. And he, and he married them together. And that's what's called an IUL or an indexed universal life insurance policy. It's not for everybody, but it is for some people that want to grow their money, take on some of that growth without any of the risk of loss. All in all, this was a pretty good interview. The interview is actually more than an hour long in length. I'll leave the original 
link down below so that you can watch the full interview. We talk, they talk a lot about boxing and fighting and MMA and stuff like that, but there was some really good in, insightful information here about money and business that I definitely wanted to bring forth to you guys because as you know, this channel is all about money and business and leveling up in life and helping you make better financial decisions. So let me know in the comments who you want to see me talk about next, whether it's an entrepreneur, it's a business owner, it's an entertainer, it's a content creator, whoever it is, drop it down in the comments. I'll see if I can stick that in the schedule. Until the next video, my friend, make sure you live loud, laugh louder, and learn to be a better you. We'll talk to you in the next video. God bless.